What we're looking at here is a model of the hard part in a butterfly wing, just a small part of a wing scale blown up about 100,000 times and we've coloured the different regions to represent the different crystalline orientations within the wing scale. Many of the spectacular colours you see in the biological kingdom from mother of pearl shells, peacock feathers, beetle shells, butterfly wings are due to these sorts of spectacular structures that form at tiny length scales. In this particular butterfly the wing is always green to camouflage it and the green colour is actually produced by this structure. It's not produced by pigment, it's produced by the structure of the hard stuff in the wing. So the green colour in this particular scale is due to the length scale here. It's the size of the holes and the channels that allows green to come in and bounce off, whereas other colours come in and don't bounce off. It's a photonic crystal. Our interest in this structure really comes from this complicated three-dimensional nature, sponge-like structure, which is very unusual compared to usual standard structures, which are sheets or pillars. This is a much more complicated three-dimensional network. To determine these structures, we take a butterfly wing, we pull the scale off the wing and we slice it, and then we put it in what's called a focus iron beam electron microscope, and then we slice it back, just like slicing salami, layer by layer by layer by layer. Then we put it in our supercomputer here in the ANU, and we reconstruct the three-dimensional structure from those two-dimensional slices. Our studies of liquid crystals in the lab have shown that we can form similar structures just by mixing, for example, fats and water, or soap and water. What's amazing is that in the butterfly, to grow these structures, it all happens while it's wet in the chrysalis. So it's all underwater, and there the cell material is folding these to form these beautiful three-dimensional structures, which then act as templates to give us these network structures. Our interest in these things arose from the deep questions that arise in pure geometry and in the physics of these sorts of materials. But it turns out that like any deep scientific question, it leads to many interesting applications. So one application would be in the pharmaceutical industry where you would use this sponge as a matrix to release drugs slowly. Another application would be to make iridescent paints, so to give you very beautiful coloration depending on where you look at the paint. And lastly, and probably most fundamentally, these, would be, these are very interesting devices potentially for all optical computers where you use light to do computing instead of electrons.